Hi, this is Glenn Wright with Hero Safety. In today's tutorial, I'd like to go over the autorotational RPM check. At one point or another, you'll probably be tasked to go make sure that the autorotational RPM on your AS350, EC130, or AS355 is set properly. The way that we control the amount of autorotational RPM exists when we have full down collective is the downstop bolt on the collective. So there's a bolt that limits how far down the collective can go. If you need more RPM, that bolt is just unscrewed a little bit and the collective will set lower and you will have a higher rotor RPM. So when you go do this check, you want to do it at the lightest possible weight you can. And the reason for that being is the higher the weight, the higher the autorotational RPM needs to be for the check. So when the fuel is close to the low fuel uh, indication, it's a good time to do this check. Uh, generally, you do want to do it with two people so one person can write down the information and one person does the flying in the helicopter. The procedures for this check are located in section eight of your rotorcraft flight manual. It spells out exactly how you're supposed to do this. And there is no check where you uh, turn off the engine or take it back to idle or anything. So you're gonna be doing this check at flight position on the um, throttle or the fuel flow control lever or the um, overhead fuel flow control levers on the 355. Um, for our example, we're gonna use the procedure in the 130T2, but for the most part, it's almost exactly the same in all the various helicopters. So what you do is you fly up to your altitude that you're going to be doing your check at. And for this particular example, let's say that we've decided to do the check at 2000 feet. Uh, we're gonna get the outside air temperature reading at that point, and then we're gonna go above it. Then you want to get at a high enough altitude above your check altitude so that when you enter the auto rotation, you're at a steady state auto rotation as you pass through that altitude. So you'll slowly lower the collective. And now when you do this, the rotor RPM is going to go high. So you got to make sure that you check it to make sure that it doesn't go too high. It doesn't go past your red line on the upper limit. And often, if you're, if you're heavy, the high rotor RPM horn will be going off while you're doing this. So you have to be very gentle in the movement of the collective to make sure you don't overspeed your helicopter. So you want to be at your steady state speed of auto rotation as you go through your altitude. The altitude we chose was 2,000 feet. And then we're going to record what the auto rotational RPM is at that check. So we write down the altitude, we write down the fuel that exists so that we can compute our weight of the helicopter. Uh, let's say that the helicopter weighs 3,968 pounds, which happens to be 1,800 kilos since we're going to have to use kilos for the, for the chart. And let's say during the check that we got a rotor uh, RPM indication of 400. So we'll go back and we'll land and we'll go to the next page, which has the chart that goes over um, what the auto rotation RPM should be. So again, in our check, we had 20 degrees at 2,000 feet. So we'll go from the 20 degrees up to 2,000 feet pressure altitude. And again, you know what pressure altitude you're at by setting 299 or two in your Colesman window in your altimeter. Then we go over to 1,800 kilos and we come down and we see that we needed to have an auto rotational RPM of 410. So we were 10 short. So what we need to do is get down to that downstop bolt, obviously maintenance does. And for every one turn is 10 RPM. So that bolt needs to be turned one full turn to get uh, 10 more auto rotational RPM. I hope that clears up any questions on the auto rotational RPM check charts, and uh, we'll see you at the next Euro Safety tutorial.